There's a fine statue of Matthew Flinders outside St Paul's Cathedral in Melbourne. Last time I looked, there was a bird on his head, which is a problem if you're a statue of a famous person. Occupational hazard, I suppose. St Paul's Cathedral is on Flinders Street. The Flinders name has popped up all over Australia, on banknotes, stamps, the names of schools in Victoria and Queensland, a bay in Western Australia and its winery, and even a motel in Coonabarabran. Matty has obviously had a big impact on Australia. He was one of the greatest navigators of them all. He was the first to sail around our island continent, to make accurate charts of it, and even to give it its name. He came from a family of surgeons who wanted him to be a surgeon as well. But he always wanted to be a sailor in the Royal Navy. He sailed under Captain Bly, where he practised his navigation skills in the Pacific Ocean. He took part in a naval battle against the French on the glorious 1st of June in 1794. In 1795, he served on a ship with the newly appointed Governor Hunter, who encouraged him and George Bass to explore some of the coastline of New South Wales and Van Diemen's Land. Their first trip was a short one just south of Sydney. Then Bass explored the coastline of Victoria before the two mates sailed around Van Diemen's Land, proving it's an island. On the strength of this work, Flinders was given command of the investigator with the job of making charts of the whole Australian coastline. He married in London before he was due to sail, expecting to take his wife with him. Unfortunately, she was seen on the ship without her hat on, so she had to stay home. England and France were at war around 1800, but they gave one another passports to be used for scientific expeditions. The French were also exploring Australia, and Flinders met a French ship under Nicolas Burdin at Encounter Bay in South Australia. They were quite friendly with one another, showing one another the passports which they carried for their ships. Flinders' ship, the investigator, was leaking badly by the time he finished sailing around Australia. So he asked the governor to give him another one to sail back to England. Unfortunately, he was then shipwrecked on the Barrier Reef and had to ask the governor for yet another vessel to go home to his darling Annie and to publish his charts. The problem with all of this ship changing was that Matthew's scientific passport was given by the French for the investigator. When he was forced to put in at the French island of Mauritius, his story was doubted and he became angry. The French governor, in turn, became angry with him and held him captive from 1803 until 1810. When Matthew finally arrived home, he and Anne worked very hard to prepare his charts for publication. But Matthew was a sick man, and the doctors could do nothing for him. His books were finished just before he died. They were placed in his hands, but he never opened his eyes to see them. You can explore Matthew Flinders' life at greater length in my biography of him, available from greenbarrow.com.au